Hi, I'm State Representative Marcus Ficelli. Thanks for joining me today as we tour the 3rd Legislative District. I remain focused on creating jobs, supporting our public infrastructure, protecting our most vulnerable, and making sure that we're investing in our neighborhood schools. Come along with me as we check out some of the exciting things happening in the 3rd Legislative District. I'm here with Brian Estes, who's a board member of the South Perry Farmers Market. As you can see, there's a lot of activity going on here, uh, right here in the South Perry neighborhood. There's a lot of great local foods and a lot of great local vendors. And of course, a lot of this food comes from some of our local farmers. And Brian has been uh, at the forefront of pushing the farmers market here and, and really at the forefront of moving uh, healthy food in our community. And we have programs at the state like the Farmers Market Nutrition Program that's really important and something that we can support. And so I wanted to ask Brian, what are some of the ways that the state can help and has helped uh, the community move the farmers market? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, the first thing to say is that um, the, this market here is really looking to be a vital hub in this neighborhood and in Spokane and that um, we're trying to look at how small businesses, uh, you know, rural farmers, urban, urban crafters can um, create an innovative economy and, and uh, meet the needs of this immediate local economy uh, and, and, their, and their community members. Um, this year, over a 25-week season, we're going to look at about $200,000 in sales for, for our growers and, 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 and vendors. Um, wow. And we're really excited to do something that um, we can see here in the neighborhood as a, as a hub for development and community activity, um, but something that's also good for the rural communities in the Inland Northwest, and, and to look at that exchange as something that's dynamic and vital and that um, takes um, you know, independent small businesses, but also creative programs um, like the Farmers Market Nutrition Program. What do you think the importance is of folks knowing where their food comes from yeah. and uh, with uh, our children especially yeah. and healthy yeah. food in schools, yeah. knowing what, what is important about that? Why uh, with our diabetes epidemic and obesity, um, do you think we can make a difference to markets like places like right Yeah, here? and I think that it's important to say we're really proud of, of, uh, of farmers markets as a vehicle, but it's really as far as the local food system and a food system that's going to get the best, healthiest food out there, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. And, and um, I've had the, the opportunity to do a fair amount of work with school districts here in Spokane and, and, and northeastern Washington that are looking at bringing more of these farmers' foods into their cafeterias and into, the, into their kitchens and um, looking at um, all of the different ways that are, are both business opportunities but ways to get healthier, better food on the table and to have it be something that's just this kind of wonderful cycle for our local community and local economy. This is a Thursday and there's a lot of activity, um, a lot of people come in yeah. here and uh, thank you for your work and yeah. for your advocacy in Olympia for these important programs. Yeah. We look to move uh, healthy food forward and make our families uh, in better health. Yeah. So, thanks no, a lot, thanks Brian. So Here we are at the New Tech Skills Center. We're in the Hilliard neighborhood. We have a lot going on, including a major capital investment of state dollars. I'm here with uh, Will Surrett, the director of the New Tech Skills Center, to ask him a little bit about what this expansion means for this uh, facility. Well, thanks, Representative Richelli. Um, we're looking at adding a approximately 28,000 square foot uh, addition to our building, the south end, south parking lot, uh, focus on STEM programs. The upstairs part of the addition will be primarily focused on health careers. We're looking at a medical assisting program, mm -hmm. health careers program, possibly a pharmacy tech program, uh, and then lots of room for science, uh, core science classrooms. We'll be moving our current game design uh, program into the new building, expanding space, and then we're going to be moving our broadcast and video production program into the new space and changing focus of that program to focus more on um, video animation technology. Well, you can see there's a lot going on here. There's over $13.5 million of state investment. And there's a lot of innovative programming going on for our students, too. And we have John Sweat here, who works on innovative programming in our school district, who's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on with the OnTrack Academy and the new uh, Tech Skills Center. One of the things that we really realize is that to prepare kids for the 21st century, we really have to include that rigorous core academic exposure as well. So what we're really excited about with the new facility is that additional space. So we'll have lab space for kids to be able to take courses like physics, 
chemistry, biology, and those kinds of courses. So currently, right now, we're working on opening up those opportunities for kids. Our robotics and engineering kids, which we have a, a twilight program after school, those kids are actually taking physics right now along wow. with that program. That's great. Sounds like hands-on learning for a lot of folks um, to prepare them for the global economy and get them ready to get jobs and get the training and education they need to uh, have, have success in their academic endeavors. I'm here with WSU Spokane Chancellor Lisa Brown. Where are we? Well, Marcus, we are right beside the new pharmaceutical and biomedical sciences building that the legislature helped us build. It will house pharmacy and medical education, a class of 40 medical students already, someday 160. This is a health sciences campus. It's interprofessional and intercollegiate. We have medical education, nursing, pharmacy, health policy, occupational and physical therapy. We work with WSU Spokane, Eastern, and University of Washington. So a student can study anything within the health professions here. There is a lot going on in medical education with the Affordable Care Act coming online, with all of the needs for our health professions. What do you think it means for our economy here in Spokane and for the uh, health professions we need? Well, what's really important is that the students that uh, get their health professional degrees here will be serving our community in Spokane and in the rural areas surrounding Spokane and many of the underserved populations who are now going to have health insurance because of the Affordable Care Act. So we will be meeting the needs of health care, both for the aging population and for new people coming onto the health care system. Well, it really is all about the lab coats and scrubs. We've banked a lot of our future on the health care sector, and I think that's a, a good thing to be putting our uh, efforts into. You had a large part in the role as a Senate Majority Leader, and now you've transitioned this role as Chancellor. We want to thank you for all your work. You're welcome. And uh, they refer to Spokane as the, the heart of the Inland Northwest, and I think we're actually the heartbeat of the Inland Northwest. Just to the left of the Health Sciences Building, we're at the Phase One Building, which houses a lot of EWU's programs. I'm here with E.B. Vody, President of the Washington Student Association and lobbyist for the Eastern Washington University students. E.B., there's a lot going on in higher ed right now. What do you think are the most pressing issues facing students? Well, thanks for the question, uh, Representative Richelli. Most pressing, of course, to students is the amount of student debt. As a student yourself, I'm sure you have student debt. Um, just uh, the Washington Student Associate uh, Achievement Council just released last year figures that the average student graduates with $22,422 in wow. debt. Financing our education is becoming more and more hard, less and less accessible to students. It's really something the Washington Student Association tries to advocate for is uh, lower tuition because we believe that is the best best form of financial aid and best way to stay out of debt. What other issues are facing students on campuses today? Well, students today have an ongoing problem with accessibility, just getting onto the campus in the first place. We see a lot of the populace, especially here in Washington State, of kids that just can't make it to school. You know, um, the high cost of tuition, the uh, lack of accessibility, and regarding that student debt, which also you know really affects our spending power once we graduate, and just the demographics uh, surrounding uh, specifically like undocumented students here in Washington State. It was really our honor to present you with one of our Legislators of the Year award uh, for the work that we did uh, during session last year in Olympia. It really was a pleasure to be able to work with you and for you to pay attention to the students. One thing that students are often uh, misconceived as or misperceived is that we are not a good constituent group, that we don't have any effect, that we're young, that we're inexperienced, and that we don't actually vote. Right? You took all of those things aside and made sure that you gave the students their, their due deserves, and that is to actually work with us to bring us to the table and to make sure that we had a voice that that we deserve as the future of Washington's economy. Thanks, Eb. It's been a pleasure representing Joe. Thank you. Well, we're here at the Emanuel Life Center, uh, which is a great neighborhood center for a lot of important resources and services for um, some of our most vulnerable and some of our earliest learners. I'm here with Pastor Mitchell, and we were proud last year to help secure funding, $250,000. Uh, for this building. Pastor Mitchell, 
what is that funding going to go to do and what do you do here at the Manual Life Center? Yep. Right now uh, what we're going to do is utilize the uh, funds to uh, put a sprinkler system into the building and also to do some renovation and uh, mainly to uh, so that we can um, take advantage of full usage of the building where we would be able to do um, early childhood uh, education. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What are some of the other services you provide? I see a lot of activity behind us, oh, a lot of computers. Yes, what do we do uh, here? Exactly. This is the um, uh, after school program uh, that, that we're in right now and these kids are um, um, linked to the uh, internet and uh, doing some wonderful things. They have their homework to do. Uh, we have some um, uh, people who would tutor them and, and this is the neighborhood where uh, this is really, really needed. Uh, especially we serve the uh, Grant Elementary School mm -hmm. and uh, the kids come over here and we would help them with their um, uh, learning um, uh, opportunities. From our earliest learners to some of our other support services, we're really working here to help folks lift them out of poverty in a sustainable way. Exactly, and uh, what are, uh, the, the main thing that we're doing is we're trying to help people to move from dependency to self-sufficiency. And uh, what that means is that we have programs that would um, undergird that philosophy and to uh, help people to improve their quality of life. There's a lot of good things going on here at the Manual Life Center. Really pleased that your taxpayer dollars were put to work here. Um, great uh, capital budget investments. Uh, really, our capital budget, our transportation budget, these are uh, investments in our communities. They also create jobs, uh, transportation problems like the North Spokane Corridor, things like that. They put people to work, they're investments in our community, they create jobs and they help folks. And I'm just so pleased that uh, uh, the third district team was able to help uh, work with you to secure this funding so we can continue to expand the great services that we have going on here. And let me just uh, say that uh, you know we uh, appreciate uh, what you have done to champion this funding uh, in the legislative session. And, um, and you guys were uh, here uh, looking at the building, knowing exactly what needed to be done, and that you guys put all of your effort in uh, making that happen. And we truly, truly appreciate the work that you have done. Thank you so much, Pastor Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, we know that um, you're here to serve others, and uh, as legislators, we're here to serve the community. And it's great teamwork that makes things move forward in Spokane. Thanks great. so much, Pastor. Yeah, and just let um, the governor know that uh, I'm ready to play uh, three on three basketball with him. <laughs> Let's do it. This time, yeah, and actually you do. One of yeah. the cool things that, that yes. goes on here is that there's a, a open gym, open and I, gym. I did promise to come back and do some open gym, open and I look forward basketball. to playing some basketball. Let's do it. Let's All do right. it. All Thanks right. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Good. 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 Thank you again for joining us on our third legislative district tour today. We're at the South Perry Farmers Market, and uh, we're about to enter our mobile office where we're going to be meeting with constituents and talking to them about the issues that matter most to them. I hope you've seen some exciting things that are going on in Spokane and some of our taxpayer investments. I always appreciate your comments and feedback. Together we can continue to move our state forward and I look forward to our consistent contact and making a better Spokane. Thanks so much.